Hello guys and welcome to another video and this time the video setting is going to be very different from the usual and this is going to be a new approach to creating content so bear with me on this as I will, I'm going to explain today the, uh, the topic of the day is going to be um, UV maps and uh, I, I felt like in my initial video that I, I did not cover enough about it. There were some important points to cover and uh, that is uh, the margin and padding. Now you might be wondering what is the what do you mean by margin and padding? Uh, margin and padding. Right. So I have a note here that I have written and I'm going to quickly get to it. The margin space which I'm going to explain here in this uh, drawing. So I'm gonna just expand this a little bit so we all can see. So I'm going to explain to you what margin is. So here we have our UV layout. And in our UV layout, we have like a bunch of islands. I'm gonna draw some islands like this. The point of this, so we imagine this like we have this UV layout and we have our objects here and I'm going to explain to you about this thing really quick so this is our UV layout the border so what is margin exactly so what I mean by margin is is the minimum distance between the UV layout and the borders now why is that essential you might ask well the thing is is that when we bake normal maps the normal maps, when they get baked, they take space. They, they take space and uh, it will, you know, if not, if you don't have enough margin, it will bleed over to the UV map. So I want to explain to you the whole thing about the entirety of, of the UV map system and how it works. And the way it works is that we have this, the current thing that we have here, the layout here, is the positive space. This is where you put your UV islands, this is where you uh, project your objects, you know, for all the objects and all that, and lay it out and pack it neatly and tightly here. Now, if you go outside of this, uh, this is going to be called the negative space. So this outside of it, which I'm gonna put in red, is the negative space, or negative one, which is minus one, right? And it's it goes for both axes, right, in the UV. So the negative axes, I'm going to show you really quick. And assuming that, uh, let's just put an object like this, right? So this is the object that we have in the UV layout. If we move it to the negative space, this side, this half that is outside of the UV layout, will be displayed here. All right, so here I have the texture that I just showed you. Uh, sorry, not the texture exactly, but here's an example of what I tried to do in, uh, in MS Paint, which was creating one half being yellow and the other half being blue. Right, so I'm going to take this side, for example, and I'm going to split this by pressing Y. Now, if I move this around, you can see if I move it uh, horizontally, uh, it acts weird because the way it's displayed. But anyways, the idea here is that if I move this around, Right now we are in the positive UV space, UV layout space, right? If I move this to the negative space, you can see that here it's going, it's, it's becoming yellow. So if I move this further, it's in the negative space right now, this thing, this island, you can see that it's turning yellow. So the, what's going on actually is this island, the, the chunk of it, is going from here all the way to here. It's uh, going back here and it's showing the yellow texture. Now, I'm going to show you a reason why, you know, having a margin and also having padding is very important in, in UV mapping in general. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to show you a, a better example in Photoshop. Okay, so here I have Photoshop open and I have this UV block out uh, layout uh, made by Mr. Rifleman. So thank you, Mr. Rifleman, for giving me the opportunity to uh, show everyone an example of, you know, the UV margins 
and uh, the UV padding. So let's get into this now that we have this example right here. So think of these the lockouts as the UV islands, which they are. Uh, these UV islands have a margin, and you, you might be thinking, why is there like a, a distance between uh, the UV border here and a distance between the UV island? Now here is what we call margin. Now you might be asking, why do you need a margin? Isn't that just a waste of space? Wouldn't it be better that we don't have any margin space so we can utilize most of the the, the UV space in, in the UV layout? Wouldn't that make a lot more sense? Well, the thing is, is that when we bake normal maps, it's going to take a lot of space. So I'm going to lower the opacity on this one and show you here that the baking takes indeed takes space so here we have uh, some space here in this block out image oops and if I lower the opacity you can see that there is this space so I'm gonna show you really quick I'm gonna highlight this I'm gonna go here and keep the opacity like this and I'm gonna use a brush to show you so I'm going to increase this, make it hard, and go here and take this, right? We have this chunk here that's being taken. So now if I go back and switch between opacity and no opacity, you can see that there is indeed a, a difference between the UV layout here and obviously we need to um, have space for the margin. Now this is one of the most important reasons why we have space. And is there a specific amount of space that we have to give uh, for the, the margin? And I'd say yes. Uh, some projects, they vary. There's a specific amount. There's like 10 pixels uh, distance, and sometimes it's five. Uh, other times uh, it's even more depending on how, how complex your mesh is. So I'm gonna hide this really quick. I'm gonna show you that all across the UV islands, you have space here, right? I'm gonna create another layer and I'm gonna show you the distance here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 pixels for this UV margin uh, distance. So we have a, a, a limit of 15 pixels here sometimes it varies because uh, some objects are not as big but here for example uh, we can look at this and see how many so, so here's another example in this part so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so as I said it, it, it varies and in and, and some cases uh, it, it might be even less or more so one two three four five six seven eight nine nine pixels and uh, this uh, this UV layout was made like way back in in, in 2012 I think uh, according to the, the the contents that I have received and again this is made by, by Mr. Rifleman so thank you for this uh, thank you for c contribution so we can use this as an example and and my students uh, can see this so, same case here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 pixels, and uh, it varies between, but usually, uh, since this is an old model, it's made back then, like the UV mapping there is like, at that time it was different, uh, in programs like Rhizom UV, uh, formerly known as uh, Unfold 3D, was uh, it has like the system that uh, allows you to uh, give the margin a value. So you can give the margin a distance value and you can see why it's really needed. Because if I now lower the opacity here, you can see how much baking takes. And, and, and depending on models, sometimes some models, they have like bigger uh, cages. So the cage distance values might vary. And so the results here they continuously change so you can see if I 
you can see how different it is. Here's the, the UV island and versus the baking here, and you can see that it, it has indeed taken a lot of space. So that's why it's very important. And, the, and I want to explain as well as to why it's important because, see, if we didn't have distance here for this, right, this baking detail would bleed over here. It would bleed uh, over and it will, it will go to the negative space and it will affect the other side. If, say, if, say there's another UV island here uh, that will get that baking thing, that will, it will get that baking over here. So the reason as well as to why we, we do this, essentially, and I want to recap this, is to let the baking and texturing process to have that uh, bleeding space. Because if we don't have any space for it to bleed out a little bit, it's, uh, it's going to cause a lot of artifacts. And here you can see that there are some issues here with the baking, but clearly, since it's old school, uh, the uh, it, there's been like a little bit of cleaning up and editing so the back in the day they would fix issues with baking sorry what they would do <laughs> is that uh, they'd bake maybe once or twice or more depending and they they try out with different meshes they try like different objects that have better baking results and then they combine both UV uh, sorry both uh, normal maps that have been made and then you know like they fix they they erase the the parts that cause issues and then they just mask it on top and take the best out of both normal maps and fix it now of course today nowadays it's been it, that thing has been improved you have like programs like marmoset that fix the bacon for you and if there's any skewing problems you can easily fix that through marmoset uh, but you of course you have the option of using photoshop for this or any image editing software for that matter and it will give you really good results so now let's go on to padding what is padding so padding is the minimum distance between uv islands now you might be asking again why would do we need this well the thing is as i stated with the margin is the baking uh, we need some space so that we don't have bleeding going on over to the uv islands and that happens in baking process sometimes in, in when it comes to baking there there are these errors that occur you might see some artifacting or weird bleeding effect going on it's because of the cages might be a little bit big between objects that intersect so it might cause that problem and as well as the uvs so if your uv is also uh, they don't have any padding as in the distance between each other uh, it will also contribute to that problem so it's very important to have padding for your UV islands so that you can see here uh, if I again play with the opacity here's like some distance between these and then if I go again you can see that there's this baking now of course the, since this is an old model uh, a lot of things have been fixed through it manually or by hand uh, to correct these problems I really hope that you guys understand now the differences between padding and margin so when it comes to UV mapping, uh, in, in other 3D software like 3ds Max, uh, you might come around with the term padding once so you're wondering what the hell is this padding thing? What does it mean? So, or if you're learning Rhizom UV, which is a great program for unwrapping 3D models. Now, I'm not sponsored by them, so I'm just mentioning this. And uh, since the program uh, is something that I'm learning right now, is very interesting and it, it delves it dives deep into the the topic of uh, UV mapping and this is something I, I felt that I did not cover initially in my UV mapping video which I have in the description and, and in this uh, corner top corner you can see that video but this is what I wanted to cover about and I'm sorry that this is a very unique or different uh, style of educational material this is to teach people uh, the reason uh, why UV margins or margin space values are needed and why padding is important so that when you be uh, sorry so that when you bake uh, normal maps and you know get into the texturing process there's some space uh, that you can leave for the textures to have a little bit of bleeding so that there's no issues because if we don't ha give the 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 mar if we don't even provide a margin space then it's going to cause problems and the same case for padding if you don't give you know 
each of these uh, UV islands some space because you know they need space just like us people and we sometimes get pissed off we need a little bit of space to calm down you know to relax a little bit and uh, you know things to get better but yeah this was the recap or well not a recap but more information regarding about UV mapping and why margin distance or you margin space values are important along with padding why padding is important and why do you need it it's one of those reasons that I wanted to make this video and I felt that the other video was lackluster in the sense that it did not go a little bit further and if you guys like this these kinds of videos I have some plans in the future because I want to explain a little bit further and uh, go a little bit in depth about various 3D topics like just like how other YouTubers like Arimus and uh, sometimes you know the style of education I want to go for is like MX2 or Arimus or Arimus please you know, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, but uh, there was also another channel that I really liked was PZ, uh, PZ3 or PZ3, uh, great channel by the way, and I wanted to create uh, content similar to that and it was very inspiring to see. So this is my first approach on this subject matter and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.